This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Okay, this is my annual year in review video, uh, and I'll focus on both the fisheries and on uh, some favorite pieces of gear, like a dozen pieces of gear that I really like. Hey, my year started in Florida. I'm going to just have a little bit of Florida video here with a plug that worked really well for me, but also worked for the stripers. In fact, I originally got the plug from the Saltwater Edge up in Rhode Island where it sells very well as a striper plug. Oh, <laughs> holy crap. Okay, a 40-inch snook. Hey, the Florida fishery was very good to me, but I have nothing to compare it to. So uh, let's move on to the fisheries of the Northeast. And there's that four-and-a-half-inch rebel jump in meadow uh, being applied in the Northeast for striper. And what you're going to see here is my first cast in the Northeast with that plug. And the setting here was, um, I didn't have any fish. I got swirled once or twice on a pencil and decided to give this thing a try. Now I mentioned uh, I got this plug up in um, Rhode Island, Saltwater Edge, and uh, Jane H. Tackle's carrying it now, but you've got to replace the hooks on these things. The, the hooks that come on this plug are absolute crap. Uh, so BMC 9626, either a one or a one-oh. Come on, Mr. Snook. It works when I say that in Florida, why not? <laughs> oh my goodness. Not a snook, but I'll take him. barbs work everywhere. Okay, I'll talk about the fishery as I move into a, a different uh, striper segment. Hey, this is um, bluefish here, and uh, the bluefish for me this year were much better than the previous two years. Um, and this plug is the dark matter, the middle size, the medium silver was just a killer for me. We're going to get to see that in a later segment as well, but let's just watch this. And it's the medium silver pencil. Wow, that was a jumbo. I have a feeling he ate the pool. Oh, he's got it in his mouth. There he is. Yeah. Wow. Come on, jump. Yeah, so I had good sized bay blues, but then uh, there were bluefish in the sound. Uh, a good chunk of the summer into the fall, although they didn't have that kind of size. Um, they were mostly three to eight pounders. All right, here comes that plug again. Um, the dark matter, medium silver, but this time the rod and reel. This is a Tsunami Salt X 4000 and the Salt X eight and a half footer. So it's my first experience with that combination. Uh, both of those things just awesome and this plug just became my go-to in the spring for um, for bass and big blues and again there are links to all of these items in the video description
And I'd say the sweet spot on this rod, probably three quarters of an ounce to about one and three quarters. Handles Ooh. a good size fish comfortably and it's fun with schoolies. All right, something completely different for me. I got to spend a few hours uh, out on this Sea Dew Fish Pro, and uh, yeah, it, this was fun. Um, it's pricey. Um, it, it's, I think, in the low teens or something, but uh, yeah, it's very well suited for fishing. And uh, yeah, I can talk a little bit about the weak fishing. So that's what I'm doing. I have got it out for weak fish, and the weak fishing in the Peconics. Um, definitely decent this year uh, especially in the spring and some better fish more three to five pounders some bigger ones mixed in um, so that's just really wonderful news this is a little guy you know i was testing this thing out in the summer but had no trouble going out and, and catching a couple of weak fish with it uh, but the other thing i wanted to do was go fast all right i have to do it one handed because i don't want to lose my camera Okay, gulp recharge juice, whether you save it from other containers or you just buy it, get a jar like this if you're fluke fishing, get a jar like that, throw all your grubs in there, doesn't matter if the stuff was from the previous year, and every chance you get when you're fishing, dunk your rig in there. Um, I became a firm believer in that. I really became convinced this year that that makes quite a bit of difference in the fluke catch. I just can't emphasize this strong enough because what I was seeing is I was the only one on the boat doing this for a couple of trips and I was heavily out fishing these guys. So finally, Rick got like the same jar, did the same thing. He went from, and you're gonna hear some dialogue here, you know, he went from catching nothing to like high hook on the boat. And the only difference he made was he went over to recharging. Uh, <clears throat> All right, where's, the, where's that jar of blue fuse? John, it's on the white. John, I think it's, Helpful if you recharge recharge on the way up on the drift. I'm finding that that makes the difference. That's amazing. How'd you learn that? I don't know. I, oh, YouTube. That's right. I saw yeah, a video of yours and finally decided to do it. And I went from catching no fish <laughs> to catching the most fish. All right, I can't say it any better than he just did. Uh, the recharging helps. And my impression of the fluke season is just not a good one. Um, it was poor in Peconic Bay, uh, Long Island Sound. It was hard to get a keeper. Um, even Montauk had times when the fishing was slow and we ended up going to Block Island, which is another 10 miles. Uh, and the fishing was good there, but boy, it's you know a long way to have to go for fluke. Now I did hear on the Western South Shore and the bays that they did well there. Uh, I found pretty decent fishing in Shinnecock Bay for a while with the kayak, um, but in general, uh, fluking not great in 2020. I hope your experience was better than mine. Whoa! Oh. Okay, a product that I'm really proud of is this. Uh, Dark Matter John Skinner Rod, uh, 9 foot 2 inches, made entirely to my specifications. Uh, this is something that uh, I worked with um, J&H Tackle on and their rod manufacturer and you know, went through a couple of prototypes to get it perfect. It's got that uh, beautiful uh, parabolic bend to it. It, it does a great job on uh, you know, medium size and schooly fish are, are fun, but where it really excels is when you need that extra oomph when you've got a cow on there, um, that rod will do it for you. And it's just a pleasure to cast. And the other thing I want to mention is that plug that you just saw me take out of that striper's mouth. Uh, that is a dark matter pencil, large, 
heavy and I also had a lot of input into that as well. I was drilling and filling plugs for a while to get the perfect weight. Now they make them that way, 2.6 ounces. And for a good chunk of the striper season, I threw little else but that plug. It was just so effective for me. The casting distance and consistency is superb, and most importantly, it pulls up big fish. And as for the quality of the striper season, I would say overall it was a little bit better than the previous last couple of years. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe, and especially with the new regulations, you know, maybe we've turned a corner and it's starting to get better. The one thing that bothered me is I noticed a big void in, I would say, like the 18 to 30 pound class. Uh, you know, for many years, that's like the bulk of the decent fish that I would catch and there were not a lot of those. Um, there were some bigger, there were a decent number smaller, but there's like a big opening um, in that 20 pound class where there just doesn't seem to be a lot of fish. So that's a little bit alarming. On the other hand, there seems to be a lot of small fish. Uh, there were a, a lot of them in the fall and uh, the South Shore had a decent run uh, with sand eels and on the North Fork, especially in the boats, I saw fish on top like every morning out, uh, you know, for the boats, but big schools. So. We'll see. Um, you know, hopefully it, it, can, it continues to improve. Yeah, and there's another look at that dark matter heavy uh, yellow pencil. Um, yeah, it was just just really quite a killer for me this year. Oh, a serious fish for sure. Uh, I got to get over this little hump here, or else it's going to just like slide back into the water like the previous one did. Okay, the rod whipped that fish in a minute and 40 seconds, so it's in great shape. New for 2020, Pen Clash 2, high speed uh, offerings for the 4000 and the 3000. This is the 4000 high speed. This is actually 2019 video. I was using the reel all fall for the Albies. It was not on the market. I wasn't allowed to. Um, talk about the reel at that time, but now I can. Awesome. 7.1 to 1 gear ratio every turn of the handle. Pulls 44 inches of line. That is huge for this kind of fishing where you're skipping that tin on top of the water, high speed. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to get that lure going fast. You can't see the rotor turning because the, the video can't pick it up. The frame rate can't pick it up fast enough. And there we go. And the reel has a slow oscillation, which that means the, the rate at which the spool goes up and down. It's very good for line lay, very good for this kind of casting, spectacular drag, uh, the perfect reel for this kind of fishing. A uh, rod I fell in love with in Florida is the Tsunami Carbon Shield, and here it is with false albacore. <laughs> but the 2020 Albi season, at least on the North Fork beaches, was terrible, worst in years. Uh, very, very few fish on the beaches, uh, even not so many in the boat. I happened to be right spot, right time, anchored to blackfish, and there were Albies coming by on this trip.
Okay, it won't show up well on the video, but on the right-hand side of my screen, uh, the charts that I have are generated by the new Humminbird Coastmaster card. What I like about it is one card covers uh, the whole coast, so I don't have to have separate cards for Florida and New York, and uh, very high-resolution contour lines. And what I'm using it here for is it's got it's marked uh, a boulder, and um, I'm slowing down over where it's marked, looking to see if I can pick it up. This is water I haven't fished, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it came up. Going to drop that trolling motor down, hit the spot lock on it, and um, you know, see if there's blackfish. That's you know, boy, what more could you ask for? It's uh, you know, all that stuff is right there on that card, and um, it, it's also got tides and other things, so uh, it's a really nice new product. Okay, blackfish season, pretty good. There's a lot of small fish, and I mean a lot of small fish, a ton, uh, but pretty easy to get keepers. A um, few better ones mixed in, not much over seven pounds. Uh, I don't know, population seems to be a little cut off, at least in the waters I fish, but yep, they're fun. Oh, oh if I can get him out. <laughs> Come on, up he came. He's going to make another run for it, though. No, it's going to be a big blackfish. I'm going to uh, just tell me where that net is. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need it here. This guy is not being swung. Oh, look at the size of this guy. Huh? Okay, it seems fitting to end the season wrap-up with a blustery blackfish. And uh, yeah, the next videos you'll see will be from southwest Florida, and I'll be running those through the winter time. So I uh, invite my northern followers and everyone else to enjoy those and if you like this video please hit the like button if you're not already a subscriber please subscribe